Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name is Jessica and I am a research scientist in the field of environmental chemistry and I finished my PhD at the beginning of this year. So for today's video I actually wanted to give you a little update on how my job is going because I have now been in my job for eight months which is absolutely insane. I don't know where the time has gone but of course I am more familiar with my job now that I've been in it for eight months and I'm more familiar with the projects that I'm working on and what my job actually entails. So I just wanted to give you an update on what, how my job is going and also just to explain a little bit about what it is actually like doing a postdoc and what it's like having that transition from doing a PhD to becoming a postdoc researcher or a postdoc research scientist like myself. So like I mentioned, I started my postdoc in March this year, which was only one week after after handing in my PhD thesis and I've had a lot of learning to do in these eight months because I have mentioned in previous videos, but in case anyone is new here, I have actually transferred to a new research field or a different research field than what I studied during my PhD. So during my PhD, I was studying in the field of marine natural products chemistry, which is looking at the compounds produced by marine living organisms. I was specifically looking at marine invertebrates and if they could produce anti-fouling active compounds. I have explained a bit more about my PhD PhD work in all of my PhD videos so if you're interested in marine natural products please check out my PhD vlogs. But now in my current role I am working in the field of environmental chemistry and I am looking at emerging contaminants in different environmental samples so this includes river water samples, sediment samples, soil samples, fish samples and we are also trying to expand some of our methods into different food Stuffs. So looking kind of more at food safety and contamination of food. My current job does use skills which I developed during my PhD. So these are different chromatography skills such as solid phase extraction, which is SPE, and different cleanup methods, which I did have to use in natural products chemistry and I am now using in environmental chemistry. And I also did get experience during my PhD running the mass spectrometer and a lot of my current job is related to using the mass spectrometer. I just said a lot of my job is related to the mass spectrometer but majority of my job is related to the mass spec because I am actually the responsible person for our LCMS in our lab. So I'm the person who is organizing back and forth with our engineers. I am the one who is running the majority of the samples alongside one of my colleagues, Pat, who does look after some of the analysis. But I am the main person. If there's something that goes wrong with the instrument, I am the one to fix it. And yeah, I am the expert, let's say, of the LCMS that we have in our lab. In case it's of any interest, we have a Perkin Elmer triple quad MS, so it's called a Q-site, and this specific instrument is very good for quantification of specific targets that you want to look at. So just to jump a little bit into kind of LCMS theory, I guess, you can do targeted or you can do untargeted analysis, and with our instrument we do targeted analysis, which means that we tell the instrument and we develop methods for specific masses that we want to look for and these masses correspond to the analytes that we're interested in detecting and we're interested in quantifying and this means that the instrument is just owning in on specific masses that you want to look for and it's kind of disregarding anything else in the sample which could be interference from the matrix so whatever's in your environmental sample or this could also be other contaminants and other compounds in your sample we're just focusing on the analytes that we want to look for so this means that this type of analysis is very good for quantification because you can increase your sensitivity because you're only looking for analytes that you want to detect. So the other method that I mentioned is untargeted analysis, which means that it's kind of more of a screening technique. So you are running your sample in the LCMS and you will get a bunch of peaks if there's lots of compounds in your sample. And then you kind of have to figure out what the masses for those peaks actually correspond to, what compounds they correspond to. And you usually use uh, different library databases to try and figure out, okay, I have this mass, 
But what compound does this mask correspond to? And this type of untargeted analysis is usually carried out using an instrument like a QTOF or an Orbitrap instrument, which is quite different from the triple quad instrument that I am running in my lab. The sun is starting to come from behind the clouds, so if the lighting starts to change, I do apologise, but I'm going to try and stay over this way so the window kind of blocks out the light so things don't change too much. So that was a little kind of roundup of LCMS, and I told you that I am the person who is mainly responsible for this instrument in my lab. But just to give you a little overview of what kind of projects I'm currently working on, my postdoc position is a little bit different than your kind of traditional postdoc in the sense that I actually work across multiple different projects. So quite often a postdoc will be hired in for a specific project, similarly to a PhD. However, I am a uh, working across multiple different projects, but applying my knowledge of the LCMS and the method development side of things across these projects. So this is good and bad for a few different reasons. So it is good because I am getting the chance to kind of coordinate with multiple different people because there is lots of different people involved in these projects as they are very, very big projects actually because they are Scottish government funded projects and they have different work packages in the projects, which is kind of like smaller projects within this bigger project. Sometimes the smaller projects are connected and sometimes they are not connected but they just kind of fall under the umbrella theme of the overall project. So it's nice because I actually have a meeting next week which is an internal project meeting where we will be catching up with microbiologists and I will be presenting some of the data uh, from the last year from one of our rivers and it's nice to see what other people in the project are doing and how our work all connects with each other. It's also nice that I get to apply my LCMS knowledge and my LCMS skills to different applications in these projects because it, the projects are all different obviously and it means that I get to dive into different applications of the instrument and see all these different areas of environmental chemistry and what different contaminants we'd like to look for and in different environmental samples. So every day is quite different because I might be working on different projects on different days. So that's been quite refreshing. One of the challenging sides of this, however, has been that alongside having to completely switch research fields, I'm also working in lots of different projects, analyzing lots of different compound classes in lots of different samples and it means that I've had to read a lot of papers to try and familiarize myself with all of these different applications and all of these different projects because they are quite different from each other. Unlike a PhD where you're just working on you know one main topic, one main project and all of your reading goes into just that one research area, I feel like I have to keep on top of what's going on in the areas for all these different projects because I'm involved in them and I need to know you know the latest news and the latest updates, the latest papers, see what people are doing. And even though they are related, like for example, I'm, for one of the projects I'm working on, a class of compounds called PFAS, and PFAS work is like really up and coming and like a hot topic at the moment. And I really need to keep on top of what's going on in the PFAS world. I need to keep on top of what's going in on in the pharmaceutical contamination world and the pesticide world. And yeah, so it's a lot to try and keep on top of everything. And I feel like I'm not necessarily becoming an expert in one thing apart from the LCMS of course because I run it all the time and I'm developing methods for it but project wise I don't feel like I'm becoming specialized in a specific area yet. Maybe PFAS actually because I am spending a lot of my time on PFAS so I can see myself becoming a PFAS expert very very soon. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you an idea there of how the postdoc is kind of different from the PhD but also how my position is kind of different from a traditional postdoc where you're just working on one project however I'm working on across multiple different projects. I was also a little bit confused when I started my job because my job title was an analytical chemist in chromatography, which very much does um, kind of explain what I'm doing. But sometimes I was referred to also as a research scientist, which I quite like. And then sometimes I'm referred to as a postdoc. And I'm kind of in this like middle ground of like, who am I? What what am I doing? <laughs> who, not what am I doing, but what what is my, you know, I, how would I describe myself? And I feel like I would describe myself most as a research scientist because again, I'm becoming an expert in one instrument and one type of method development, but I'm not just working on one project. So just to give you a little bit of a further idea of what a postdoc or what a research scientist does, I just wanted to let you know like some of the responsibilities that I have out with just doing the research bits, just so you can do a little comparison of how it is different from being a PhD student and doing a PhD 
PhD. So similarly to doing a PhD, I do have to write research papers. I guess during a PhD you don't have to, but it is a good bonus if you can get some papers published. With the nature of the work that I'm conducting at the moment, we are doing a lot of experiments where we do monthly sampling, for example in rivers, because that's what we're doing at the moment. So because we are doing monthly sampling and we do a different river every year for one of our projects, it means that we have to wait quite a long time before we can get all of the results and before we can actually write the paper. So I'm hoping that next year I can start to write my first paper in my new job, which would be really exciting. And yeah, so that's a similarity between postdoc and PhD. You need to keep writing papers, you need to keep getting your name out there. And especially for me, because I've not been in the field of environmental chemistry before and I was in marine natural products, I feel like I need to get my name out now in this field, which is a little bit annoying that I've got my papers in marine natural products, but now I've shifted gears to a different research area, so I kind of need to start again making my little catalogue of papers for the environmental chemistry sector. Very much like a PhD, I also attend conferences. So I've attended one conference since I've started my job, which was an environmental chemistry conference back in June. And my work actually hosts a yearly symposium, which is really cool, which basically brings together all of the researchers across our two research institutes. And we'll get the chance to present our work either through a presentation or a poster. And I'm doing a five minute presentation, which will be really nice. And I've also been asked to chair one of the sessions, which will be cool also. I'm also going to an event at the end of November, which is a big food and drink event, which I was asked if I would like to attend. And I'm attending that because I mentioned that I am doing some food safety work now. So it'll be good to meet with um, people in the industry, in the food and drink industry, and see how we can potentially collaborate or partner in the future. Speaking about partnering and collaborating, part of my expectation as a research scientist at my institute is that I am allowed the freedom to come up with new ideas for new research projects but with that I also need to apply for research grants in order to make my work actually be possible. So I recently applied for a research grant, it was a very small one but it's one that if I can get the money I plan to buy some standards to help me do some method development, again branching out to the food side of one of our projects and this is great that I'm allowed the opportunity to actually you know create my own projects and apply for these grants as like the lead person on the project and I am really really hoping I can get the money for this grant because if I manage to develop this method then I'm hoping it can become an even bigger project with a collaborator that I have down in England and that would really really be good for my job prospects and becoming a better researcher if I can get these grants and I can start developing these uh, ideas and projects and start leading my own projects also. So in my eight months I've also had the opportunity to supervise a master's student so I had a student come in that stayed with me over the summer and she was working on developing one of our methods and I was teaching her how to run the LCMS, how to do the cleanup and she made a great report at the end of it and I think she learned a lot and had a good time. That was also a really good experience. I had the opportunity to supervise during my PhD also but I feel like the more kind of supervising experience you get the better it is for you know being promoted to a senior scientist and for kind of progressing through your career as a researcher as well. So just to round up this video, I just wanted to give you a little more of an indication of what I do in the lab and a little overview of some of the projects we're working on without going into too much detail because I'm actually not sure how much I can share. I know that my institute is an open science institute and we try to promote being open about our projects but again I'm just I need to figure out kind of the, the, the fine line of how much detail I can actually go into about the projects. So as I mentioned I work across multiple different projects and and for some of the projects, the methods for cleaning up the environmental samples and for running the samples on the LCMS were already developed before I started my job. This means that I'm involved in when the samples arrive into the institute, uh, collected by the fieldwork team. I am one of the people that is involved in running the samples. I haven't had much opportunity yet in actually doing the cleanup process, doing the SPE and the filtering of the water samples, for example, because we actually actually have uh, research assistants which are kind of booked in to help us now and then with our sample prep which is super useful and something that I really would have liked to have had during my PhD. So it means that I haven't had so much experience doing the sample prep 
I've been very busy doing other things. So I am so grateful that we can get help when we need it. So yeah, for some of our projects, we get monthly samples coming in. We run them on the LCMS and we're looking for pharmaceutical levels in river water samples. We're looking at pesticides and we're looking at endocrine disruptors. For some of our other projects, we are trying to develop methods such as looking at antibiotic levels in soils. I'm also looking at PFAS, as I mentioned, in fish and also in water samples. And I am responsible for developing the methods for these analysis. So I'm responsible for developing the cleanup methods, so how we actually get rid of any other interferences and any other compounds we're not interested in from the soil or from the river water, for example, or from the fish. And then I'm also responsible for creating methods on the LCMS to actually analyze and quantify these compounds. I need to try and produce methods which are sensitive so we can get down to low concentrations of these compounds in the sample. I'm also responsible for validating the methods, so doing kind of typical analytical chemistry where you are determining your limits of detection, your linearity, your relative standard deviation of your standards, just to make sure that your method is actually valid before you go and actually analyze real samples. So that's been quite new to me, the whole kind of method validation, because even though I did do analytical chemistry in my PhD, it wasn't so kind of strict analytical chemistry. This is true analytical chemistry that I am doing now with all of your quantification and all of the validation and yeah I, it's been a big learning curve but I am really enjoying it so far. So that is a little bit about my job and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh I forgot to mention that I also spend a lot of time processing data which I have been doing recently. I have had to learn kind of how we process our data and all the calculations and things getting from a standard curve to then determining the concentration of the analyte in your sample and I have to say I've had to familiarize myself again with kind of PPB, PPM, nanograms per liter, you know micrograms per gram, micrograms per kilogram, all of these kind of units and things so that has taken me some time as well and I have to say I felt a little bit stupid at times because I feel like this is stuff that I should know and I had to kind of refresh my brain but yeah it's knowledge that I wasn't using during my PhD so I can't be too hard on myself for having to relearn things because I am doing stuff which is is quite completely different now. Okay, now I think I've given you the whole overview of what I do in my job. I hope this video has been useful to kind of give you an insight on what it is like being a postdoc and being in an academic role post PhD because there are some similarities but there's also quite a few differences as well. I obviously can't comment on what it is like to work as a researcher in industry. I'm just giving you my experience as an academic after my PhD and I hope it has been useful and if you have any questions please do ask me in the questions box below. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!